Hello everyone, Steve here from Tech Toy Tinker and Retro Arena. Today I'm going to do a video showing you guys the new Anbernic RG552. This device features a lot of cool things actually. I've been playing with it for a few hours now and doing some work on it. First thing I wanted to point out is that it's got a touch screen. I like that. That's very nice. It's a very handy feature. For those of you that like to do things like, say, Nintendo DS that are worried about... Um, like, say, the MP device that doesn't have a touchscreen and the stylus not being able to navigate properly with the joystick, this will fix that because you have a touchscreen. First here, we're going to take a look at some of the specifications here. This is not right. This is not an RK3066. It's an RK3399. It's currently clocked at 1.4 gigahertz. I assume they downclocked it for battery life because it's capable of going a fair bit faster. I think I've seen it as high as 2 gigahertz. So what we're going to have to do in a future build here, we're going to have to get up to those maximum clock speeds. It will cost some battery life, but it'll make games run better. This device supports ARM v7 and ARM v8, so 32 and 64 bit. It's got 4 gigabytes of RAM. It's got a 64 gig, which comes out to be 54 for no odd reason. Internal eMMC storage, as well as it supports two SD card slots. SD2 is for storage. You can use it with Android or Linux. SD1 will boot an operating system. So in this case here, I've got Android on the internal. EMMC storage, and I'm able to put a Linux SD card, for example, into into slot 1, reboot the device, and it will boot Linux instead of Android and bypass the internal storage. Now, we're going to get Dolphin out of the way first. I'm going to explain some games work, some games don't. I do expect we can get a bit better performance when we increase the CPU speed, but first we will need the source code for that. It's something that I'm familiar with how to do, and I can do it. I just need the source code. The good thing about this particular hardware here is we've been supporting it already with Retro Arena and Slash TV for, I think, what, three years now? Because of the Rock Pro 64. It's got the same CPU. So I've built many, many a kernel and many, many an image using this hardware. I did Zelda first on purpose because it's an example of a game that works. It's not very demanding, it's not very super fast-paced, it's, you know, it's just Zelda. And it works good. But, because I want to keep expectations realistic, I ignore that, that's still, yeah. If we go with, say, oh, it's a game that's going to lag. Mario Kart here. Now you're going to see it plays, and it doesn't sound like it's lagging. It's just, it's kind of a touch slow. The only drawback to this dolphin is that it's using Vulkan exclusively, so when you get graphical glitches, you can't just switch to OpenGL like you can with normal dolphin. But as you can hear, the audio is normal. I will say that, regardless, this is a major, major step up from the RK3326. And the reason why I say that is because even if it doesn't do a whole lot more, per se, than what that chipset did, it does the things that that chipset was trying to do properly, i.e. Dreamcast, Nintendo 64. All those things on the RK3326 that almost work, but they're just a little bit off, those work perfectly fine here, including Sega Saturn. As you can see, it's running, it's working, there's no lag, but it's a tiny bit slow. It's not super, super noticeable, it, it's just a touch slow. It is still very much playable. Just wanted to give you guys a fair, a fair warning that the GameCube stuff is still very much a work in progress here. Oops, wrong button. You can also just use this. You don't have to use the touchscreen if you don't want to. 
as far as Dreamcast goes, it's using Redream, and you know when Redream works, it's going to be a good experience, regardless. I also, again, I could have just used the arrows. I don't know why I didn't. I'm not going to play games for a long time. I don't want this to be a 20 minute video. I just wanted to give you guys a quick introduction. I'll do another video in a couple days. It'll be on Linux as well. And as I get my hands on the source code, I'll be porting Retro Arena. I just want to show you how good Dreamcast is on this. It's like the uh, CM4 GBA. Hint, hint, wink, wink. As you can see, though, very fluid, and it looks really good. This screen is very nice. I have to give a tip of the hat to Anbernick for the quality of screen that they used in this device. I don't remember how to X. Okay, so the first thing you guys need to know about Android, this is the home button. Now, you do have the option of doing this for the touchscreen. You can kind of get the menu to come up, or you can just do this. I should point that out now because people will inevitably ask how to do something like that. Another feature here, I've installed YouTube Advanced, it doesn't do anything too special outside the regular YouTube, except, say you play any song, any video you want, right, I'm going to shamelessly use my own YouTube, you can go like this, go back to doing whatever you want, and it will keep playing. So, Hello everyone, happy holidays, Steve here from Tech Twin. So if you want to listen to music in the background while you're gaming and doing your thing, then That'll work out well for you. That's why it's there. Super user will be removed from the public build, as will Aptoid. Don't worry about those. This is an important tool. If you want to play Android games and download them, you're going to need to either use the touch screen or map them to the keys, or the buttons, I should say. This application will do that for you and help you do that. Most emulators, I deleted. The stock image had a whole lot, and they were completely unnecessary. Like there was Neo Geo Pocket, there was uh, NES and SNES and MAME and Final Burn. And all that stuff is in RetroArch. It's much easier to just keep it in one location than it is to have a thousand different things showing up on your home screen. To that end here, I'll just show you RetroArch quickly. I haven't tested Mess in 3D games yet. I, I do plan to do that, and I will do an updated build on some of the 3D stuff and some of the higher end stuff once I get down to it. It doesn't necessarily matter what core you use per se for this game. You want to use 2005 or 2010 for the chip games though. Also you can just go like this here and hide all that stuff on your screen so you don't have to see it. I want to keep everything in the frame here. I haven't pressed toggle or set up hotkeys yet, so to exit, I just go like this for now. Some other important stuff. I got Netflix to work. I got Widevine to work for this particular purpose. I'm not going to play a video for more than a few seconds. I'm not trying to get a copyright anything. I'm just going to show you that it works. And then I'm going to stop it literally two seconds, three seconds into the video, just because I'm not trying to get in trouble. See, a Netflix logo. You saw nothing but a Netflix logo. Don't copyright strike my video, YouTube. I didn't do none. Plex is working as well. This is a work in progress. It does work. I don't. I just don't understand fully how yet, <laughs> for lack of a better way to say it. This is Nokia N-Gage. This has been pretty heavily requested, so I'm working on it. Again, work in progress. I don't fully understand how it works, so I can't really explain it right now. That works good. PUBG is working. We got Cody here. Apparently I haven't... We have to map these. 
I didn't set that up yet. It's easy to do. It's a feature inside of Cody, but for now the touchscreen works fine. I won't release it without that stuff mapped. I'm just doing a quick video here. Also, this will not be in my build. There will be Yabasan Shiro, but it will be the free version. This will also not be released in my build. The reason why is because I don't support or condone taking people's source code or piracy. Drastic and Yabasan Shiro are paid apps, and so you should only really be using them if you actually own them on your phone. It's not hard to take um, an application like, say, APK Extractor on your Android and get the APK from Drastic on your phone and just move it over. You don't need to take other people's stuff. And I've been friends with Xperia for quite some time, and so I don't support doing that at all. I know Exophase as well. And I know Devi. And so I don't support taking their work without their permission. All in all, though, this is a really great device, and I've had a lot of fun playing with it. it it's a lot... Um, it just feels a lot more robust and a lot beefier than the 3326. 30, it, it runs the Dreamcast, the N64, the, most of the PSP stuff, all really, really well. These are just... Um, video snaps from the box art scraping, but I'm just showing you VLC. So if you want to just add, you know, certain things like um, videos and stuff to a flash drive, which is what I've got here, take it on the go with you, watch your movies and stuff, you can do that. And the other cool thing, while I'm showing the top here, you can see the uh, mini HDMI or micro HDMI right there. It's kind of, there you go. You can take this with you, and because I got Netflix and stuff working, you can go, say, like you're on a vacation or you're traveling for business, you just bring this with you in a cable. You go to a hotel room, plug it into the TV, use your Netflix stuff, you can watch your stuff, or play your games on the TV. PSP works a lot better than on the other devices as well. Um, it, it's a very large difference. Mostly because of the Vulkan API. The, there's only like The difference in CPU speed is very negligible it's not that much on the current build but um, there's more RAM which is obviously better for Android and Vulkan does a lot for graphics it's a lot better than GLES to say the least we got Moonlight here as well I should probably share that quickly and connect to my desktop so as you see here I got um, access to my Steam Moonlight works okay I guess maybe it opened big picture on my other monitor. I've got multiple screens connected, so as you see, though, I can I can collect connect blah, 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 select things on my desktop. I can click on stuff. Works as it should. On an overall rating, I think that I'd probably give this device an eight out of ten. And that's not because there's anything wrong with the device, it's because some of the software is not fully matured yet, and I know that we can do better, and I know that we can do more with it. We just need time and the sources, and we can make a lot of stuff happen with this device. Also, I don't, I don't approve of using paid applications in a public build without the permission of the author first. But that's just my personal opinion. I will be doing more videos on this particular device on Linux and Android over the next few days. And that's about it for this video. So as always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed the video. Take care.